We have an update tonight on a story we've been focusing on repeatedly. Russia's policy of taking children from occupied parts of Ukraine deep into Russia itself, in effect stealing them. According to numerous international law experts, this is a war crime. Russia is taking Ukrainian kids from their parents in many cases, trying to turn them into Russian kids, which they call a humanitarian gesture. Tonight, we're getting new details about some video we saw from a rally celebrating what Russia calls Defense of the Fatherland Day. The rally was last week. At the event, there was a 13-year-old girl, Anna, nicknamed Anya, that's her, from Mariupol. And on this day, she was made to read apparently scripted words of thanks to a Russian soldier. Thank you, Uncle Yura, for saving me, my sister, and hundreds of thousands of children in Mariupol. I forget a little. Anya, don't be shy. Go hug Uncle Yuri. Everyone give a hug. Look, it's the man who saved you all. Not for nothing, his call sign is Angel. Well, tonight we know more about Anna and her story. CNN's Melissa Bell did some of the reporting for us. She joins us now from Kyiv. So what have you learned? Well, that this child, Anderson, is several times over a victim of this war, not only because, of course, she lived through the siege of Mariupol that went on, remember, for three long months, sheltering uh, in basements with her mother, brother and sister as the city was pounded by heavy artillery. She then lost her mother, a single mother of three who'd done her best to raise her so far in fairly difficult conditions, as we understand, as she left the basement one day to go out. She was killed. Anya's been mourning her ever since online with her social media were able uh, to see that, but also because, of course, she was then taken from Mariupol to Moscow for this very public display, not just the many hundreds of thousands who were there, Anderson, but, of course, uh, everyone who saw it aired across Russia, but also in Ukraine. And what we understand since is that this child's bec become uh, abused online by people angry at what they saw, threatening to hang her should they manage to re retake Mariupol from the Russians. So it's an extraordinary story of a child completely unprotected uh, and open to very public abuse ever since that extraordinary spectacle, Anderson. Were you able to speak with people who knew her in Ukraine? We were. We were able to track down, and remember that we're talking about occupied territories at this stage. We simply don't have much access. So we did manage to track down a couple of people, one a close family member who told us more about her sad history even before she made it to that stage, but also a woman who sheltered with her for those many weeks in the basement, saying that, look, Anya was a really nice girl who spent a lot of time looking after her brother and sister and who said she was really shocked when she saw that video. She burst into tears, in fact, talking about it, saying, look, she may look older than 13, but this is a child, and what's being done to her is simply completely inhumane, Anderson. I want to bring in Nathaniel Raymond, executive director of Yale University's Humanitarian Research Lab, the team that produced the report uh, made headlines detailing the scale and the scope of this mass seizure of Ukrainians, of Ukraine's children. Um, first of all, just what's your reaction to this specific case? Uh, you've seen you've seen a lot of this. It's absolutely stomach churning, Anderson, that th this is a girl who is being used as a prop for propaganda for a domestic Russian political audience. And that is a war crime underneath the Fourth Geneva Convention. Uh, the use of children as props is a violation of their special protected status. That, for me, Anderson, that's a hostage video. Even if Russia was legitimately trying to protect children in war zones, there are, who are orphaned or whatever, there are protocols for how children are to be treated. The Geneva Convention, the law of armed conflict, is basically a user's manual for Russia about how to move kids during armed conflict. They not only didn't do what's in the manual, they did opposite day and did everything exactly the way they shouldn't. And what does that mean? Well, that's a war crime and potentially a crime against humanity, as the vice president, the president and the secretary of state said in the past week. So wh what are they doing? I mean, why, why are they doing this? There's three reasons why they're doing this. One is a broader project that they call Russification uh, that you mentioned before. They are trying to return children primarily from eastern Ukraine and the Donbass and Luhansk and Donetsk home uh, as pro-Russian. Uh, and then they this, say there is no Ukraine. Ukraine has exactly. always been part of Russia. So the Russification of the children there. Exactly. And this is straight out of the playbook from Cold War Soviet Union days under Stalin. And they're using many of the same facilities from 
Soviet Union wow. political education called the pioneer camps. Uh, the second thing that's going on here is really uh, an attempt to rebrand an invasion that's failing and to present to a Russian audience basically propaganda that we're saving these kids from purported Nazis. The third thing that's happening here, which for me is what keeps me up at night, is they're gaining leverage, potentially. You know, people ask me all the time, what's the worst thing that could happen in Ukraine? A nuclear strike, uh, NATO intervention. No, the worst thing has already happened. They took the kids. Mm. Melissa, w what have you learned about the, these camps where these children are being held? Oh, really harrowing tales that we're hearing from parents who are desperately trying to find their children. There's a website that's been created here in Ukraine, Children of War, uh, that is updated daily as parents reach out put pictures of their missing children up in the hope that somehow they can be fine. But this is extraordinarily difficult, getting to the other side uh, of that border, finding the children to begin with in these camps. And bear in mind, Anderson, that a lot of these parents, there are the children who got lost in the fog of war, found themselves on the wrong side of the border, got sent to the camps, or put up for adoption. There are also the children who were sent by Ukrainian parents from the occupied territories as the Russians came in, in good faith. They were encouraged to do so because this was a two-week free holiday by the sea sometimes, where the camps were in Crimea. Uh, they were encouraged to go by their teachers, their classmates were going. Parents thought they were doing their children a favor, send them off to these camps, and haven't heard from them since, or if they have been lucky enough to hear from them, haven't been able to get them back. Once they're there, and we know a bit about what goes on in them, not just from what the, from the parents who get to speak to their children sometimes, but also because Russia makes no secret of this, Anderson. They publicize these videos showing what goes on in these camps. So the kind of activities you'd expect in a normal summer camp, but also Russian language lessons, the teaching of the Russian uh, uh, national anthem, the singing daily of the Russian national right, anthem, and a revised history that they're forced to imbibe. Yeah, Melissa Bell, appreciate it. I mean, have you... You've done this work for a long time. Have you seen anything like this? This has been the most overwhelming immediate response to human rights reporting that I've either seen or been involved in. Uh, since the report has come out, we have had statements from the president, um, from other senior officials, but we've also had sanctions on four of the officials in our report by the United States and three from the European Union. But for me, the response, which has been most telling, is what's come out of the Kremlin. They've doubled down on this program, and they say they're expanding it. Uh, Nathaniel Raymond, it's extraordinary the work you've done, your team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it.